guys, it's Ashley, and I am coming to you live from my freezing cold bedroom, which is why I am in a day glow fuzzy sweatshirt. Also, that's why you may hear my heater. Sorry, but I'd rather not freeze. Anyways, today we will be talking about The Best Yes by Lisa Turkhurst, and that is how you say her name. I googled it. This is a book about making wise decisions. As the tagline says, making wise decisions in the midst of endless demands. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it four out of five stars. Solid four stars for me. It's not my favorite book ever. It's not the best book in the world, but it's really, really good stuff. This is a Christian book, so it's geared towards Christian women, and so she uses a lot of scripture as her guidelines. This book stood out for me a little bit from other Christian women's books because it didn't just assume that all women are married with children. Now she does talk about family and kids and everything else, which is to be expected in a woman's book. However, it didn't make me as a single person feel left out or unaddressed because she also talks a lot about ministries and jobs and juggling all of life's endless demands. So it was really nice to be included. I was very pleased with that. So the premise of this book is that we all have our best yes, that thing or things that we are made to do that no one else is going to be able to do just like us. Whether it's a job or a ministry or a passion or children and our family, we all have that thing that is unique to us and that is our best yes. Saying yes to doing that thing, but also to anything that's going to improve that thing, that's what the best yes is. And so in this book, she talks about how to make wise decisions with that best yes in mind. She gives a couple different tools for making decisions. There's this five-step outline of the process of making decisions, but then there's also this little questionnaire type thing to get you thinking, is saying yes to this thing the best option for me. One of my favorite things is that she talks about decisions as like this rushing river. Essentially, every big decision is like a rushing river. You're standing on the shore looking at this river going by and you have the choice of whether or not you're going to step into the river. Once you step into the river, decisions become harder because there's just this current that comes along with that decision that's going to pull you in a certain way. But while you're still on shore, you have the option of walking up and down that river to see if there's any mysterious bends up ahead, if there's any rocks that you can't see, or if it goes down to this lovely little waiting pool at the end. She calls it chasing down the decision, where you can look at all of the options, you can see it going by, you can see what's happening to the people in the river now, you can go and see where it ends, you can go and look at all of the options around it before you make your decision. But once you make your decision, it's going to be harder to slow down or get out of it or cross to the other side or whatever. So I just love that analogy because it's so perfect. When we're faced with these decisions, and she's not talking about like, am I going to go to Moe's or am I going to go to Panera for lunch tomorrow. She's talking about, am I going to commit to doing this thing? Am I going to join this ministry? Am I going to start this job? All of those kinds of things are the decisions she's talking about. And I love this description of the rushing river because it's so true. Before you say yes or no, you have the options of thinking it through and saying, okay, if I start here, where is it going to end up? Is it going to get me closer to what I'm trying to do? Is it going to take me further away from it? What's going to happen? One thing she said that jumped out to me around this whole issue was that when you say yes to something, there's less of you to give to something else. And so you need to make sure that that decision you're saying yes to is worth the less of you that you'll then have to give, which isn't a bad thing. It's okay if you're saying yes to an amazing opportunity that you want to spend your life and spend your soul on. If you watch my last NaNoWriMo update, I talked about this book a little bit and my decision process for that. But essentially saying yes to continuing NaNoWriMo was going to leave me with less of me for things that I feel are more important, more on the road to my best yes. So it's okay to spend ourselves for something that's worthwhile and worthy of taking our time and our energy. And those are the things that she refers to as the best yes. She also spends three chapters of this book talking about no. She talks about the power of a small no. That saying no to the little things allow you the opportunity to practice saying no, but also allow you to find out what your best yes is. She also talks about how it's awkward for you and disappointing for other people sometimes when you say no. We always tend to feel bad about saying no, but she makes the point that saying no isn't a rejection of somebody else. It's a protection of your best yes and of your time. She also goes on to say that no doesn't make you a bad person. It just makes you the wrong person for that particular assignment. And then she also talks about what if I say no and people stop liking me. And she breaks down this whole saying no thing into 
an understanding of you're not going to say no to everything, but it's a matter of choosing when to say yes and when to say no to build towards this better thing for you. She also talks a lot, obviously, about choices and how we make our choices, but then our choices also make us and they shape our life. One thing that I that really jumped out to me that I actually wrote on a post-it and stuck it up on my wall was in order to live better, we need to decide better. We need to start thinking of our best yes and making decisions in a way that brings us closer to that, that brings us closer to our dreams. And that is a problem for me. I tend to just be like, yeah, I'm kind of tired today. I'm just going to sit on the couch and watch Netflix or yeah, I'm just going to, you know, spend three hours on Facebook and Pinterest. Why not? And then it's bedtime and I haven't done anything productive or anything that gets me closer to my best yes. So that one just really jumped out at me. In addition to this best yes and this idea of like a dream or a goal or whatever that you are saying yes to and building your life towards, she talks a lot about your identity and that being more important than whatever thing you're going after. One of the quotes that I really enjoyed was to know who you want to be and then just take the next step that's in that direction towards that character trait. You don't have to take 10 steps at once. Just take that next step and that next step that comes after that. And not necessarily towards that job or that ministry or that whatever, but towards that character and that person that you want to be. You know, if you want to be that person that's always stressed out because she says yes to everything, then great, do that. But that's not what I want to be, and I think that's where a lot of us are at. Before even getting into making these decisions and choices, she talks the first couple of chapters about wisdom and how we need to be soaked in the word because that is the source of all true wisdom. She talks about the difference between knowledge and insight and discernment and how they all interweave in our lives and where we get those things from. This book is packed with scripture there's this great little breakdown about the fear of the Lord brings wisdom and she gets into the root of the word and what it actually means, you know, that it's not a scary thing, that it really means in awe. I really enjoyed this book. I had picked it up at Barnes & Noble because a lot of my internet friends had been talking and raving about it. I read the first couple chapters as I was trying to make a decision and then for some reason I stopped. I made the decision, not really because of this book, but I made it, and I put the book down for a while. And so just this week I was like, oh, I should finish that book. And then I finished it in two days. So it was really good. I really enjoyed it. She has a very nice, friendly way of writing. I wish I had had this book two years ago when I was going through a big decision, but I'm really glad I read it now. It's going to live on my shelf and it's going to be referenced anytime I have to make a big decision because it was just really good and packed full of very simple wisdom. It has this whole tool of how to help you chase down that decision with this whole little chart. There's a couple pages before this one that tell you how to use the chart and how to break it down and all of that stuff. And it's just really, really good and really helpful. I very much enjoyed this book. So I would recommend this book to any Christian woman who feels busy, who feels slightly overwhelmed, who has trouble saying no when it's time to say no. Honestly, I feel like this book should be given to any woman who enters into ministry, whether paid or volunteer. If you start serving in any kind of ministry, I think they should like hand you this in your orientation packet because it was just really, really good. So I'm going to read to you now from page three because this is where I was like, yes, I should be reading this book. I actually like highlighted it and wrote like me too next to it because it was very relatable. And so if you are wondering if you should read this book, I'm going to read this to you. And if you can say me too to any of this, then you should read this book. All right, so this is page three of The Best Yes by Lisa Turkhurst. I struggle with decisions too. I don't want to miss out on opportunities, mess up relationships by disappointing people, or misstep right out of God's will. I struggle with keeping some sense of balance in my life. I struggle with worrying about what others will think of my decisions. I struggle with wondering if my inability to do it all will make my kids wind up on the therapist's couch one day. I struggle with feeling like I can't quite figure out how other women seem to do it all. I struggle with feeling like I'm going to let God down. Descriptions ping in my head. I'm tired. I'm distracted. I'm disappointed in myself. I feel slightly used and more than slightly used up. I'm a little overwhelmed and a lot worn down. These are thoughts I share only with myself, partly because I'm a positive person and these threads of admission feel too dark. And I much prefer cheery yellow to gloomy gray. Also, I hesitate to share because I can't figure out how to fix these things. So why even bring them up? In the daily sea of endless demands, I must admit, I'm not doing so well. So if you can relate to that passage, then you should pick up this book because it's just really encouraging and energizing and gives you the power to feel like, yes, I can make decisions. Yes, I can say no to these things or I can say yes to these other things. I, I just, I very much recommend this book. So if you've read The Best Yes, please let me know down below what you thought of it. Let me know how you are with making decisions or saying yes or no. Also. Should I go to Moe's or should I go to Panera for lunch tomorrow? I mean, let's be honest, we're probably going to go to Moe's because that's where we always go for lunch. But sometimes we mix it up and go to Panera because they have soup. 
All right, that was a little weird. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have a fantastic week, and I will have another video up for you soon. Bye.